Hi everyone, I am Dr. Josna. I will be talking about massive hemoptysis. So, what is hemoptysis? Expectoration of blood from the lower respiratory tract is called hemoptysis. It means it uh, the upper respiratory tract uh, bleeding is excluded from the hemoptysis definition. It is generally self-limiting, but in less than five percent of case, it could be massive. And uh, what is the definition of massive hemoptysis? What is the amount? There is no clear-cut consistent agreement or agreement on the amount or rate of bleeding. But uh, anything which can cause life-threatening uh, airway obstruction or uh, blood loss which, uh, uh, can be uh, cause, uh, called as massive hemoptysis. Uh, many studies have quoted a uh, volume range from 100 ml up to or more than 1000 ml per day as a uh, uh, as a definition of massive hemoptysis some has uh, said greater than 100 ml per hour of uh, hemoptysis is massive hemoptysis so there is no clear cut guideline if it is a life threatening you can take it as a ma uh, massive hemoptysis why it is dangerous? It is dangerous because uh, it, uh, just greater than 400 ml of blood can uh, can cause asphyxia and which may lead to death. So generally patient doesn't die because of hemorrhage or hemorrhagic shock. It, the patient generally dies because of asphyxia in the in the case of massive hemoptysis and the, the mortality in massive hemoptysis can go up to greater than 50 percent risks uh, risks of life depends upon basically amount and the speed of hemoptysis the patient's cardiovascular reserves and the ability to protect the airway so what to do so uh, put the patient in lateral decubitus position and secure the abc so airway and breathing, how to control airway and breathing and what is the main objective? The main objective is to prevent asphyxia and control the airway and maintain the uh, vent ventilation and gaseous exchange. Air, uh, airway patency needs to be maintained because the, in the massive hemoptysis there, there is a chances of airway compromise or impending airway compromise. So we need to intubate and mechanical ventilate the patient. So uh, during intubation we have to make sure that we have a difficult airway kit with us. We have section in hand. So, uh, because we may not able to see anything in, during laryngoscopy, if it, uh, we may see only blood and blood. We will, we, we may need a rigid bronchoscopy to control the airway, and uh, uh, it, we can use a single uh, lumen tube or we, we can use double lumen uh, lumen ET tube. Main objective is to uh, do isolated lungs ventilation so that we can separate the two lungs. The the affected uh, lungs uh, is uh, is isolated from the unaffected lungs so that so that the patient may not the healthy lungs may not aspirate the blood and uh, further there may not be further um, airway compromise and there may not be further. A ventilation uh, gas exchange compromise so uh, we uh, we may use for great uh, catheter uh, through fob uh, to make a tampona in, uh, to the bleeding area we have to maintain spo2 of greater than 90 so what is isolated lungs ventilation it's a uh, isolation of two lungs uh, the affected and unaffected side it is simply done by either using of sim a single lumen ET tube or double lumen ET tube. What, uh, if we have single lumen, uh, both has got its own advantage and dis disadvantage. If we have single lumen ET tube, we can simply uh, advance the tube to the unaffected area so that we can ventilate the uh, patient and there won't be any uh, further uh, gas exchange compromise or uh, and, and there may not be any aspiration from the unhealthy side of the blood. And this, uh, if there is a, a double lumen tube, uh, one uh, one lumen is a uh, tracheal lumen is generally in the trachea above the carina, and another is uh, advanced further to the unhealthy side through uh, through which uh, bronchoscopy scoop is inserted and uh, we can do the uh, treatment like we can put the uh, cold saline or we can uh, uh, we can uh, 
uh, negotiate the uh, forget uh, catheter and make a tampona uh, we can uh, inject adrenaline so uh, and we can take sample whatever is required we can do according to the situation so uh, both has got as i have told you both has got its own advantages and disadvantages the advantage of uh, double lumen tube it's, it's a, it, it is helpful in uh, separating the uninfected and affected site at the same uh, at the same time the disadvantage it is, is uh, lumen gets narrow because of uh, as it has got two tubes uh, in one so it's a uh, lumen gets narrow and uh, it can so it can easily get blocked and uh, it, it may be difficult for the bronchoscopy scoop to be inserted and along with that also procedure uh, doing a procedure could be uh, difficult in the narrow lumen uh, uh, whereas if we are taking the single lumen tube the advantage is we are want to just control the uh, control the airway uh, we can intubate the uh, intubate the uh, trachea and if we want to separate the airway we can go in advance advance to the unaffected side and continue to gas exchange and uh, at the same time we can we, if we want we can use the forget catheter and uh, it can be inserted further to the effect, uh, affected area and the tamponade can be made uh, the other advantage are that easy it is easy to negotiate uh, bronchoscopy pro uh, yeah, pro because it has got a, a wider lumen in comparison to the double lumen et tube and uh, uh, disadvantage it's that it may cause aspiration because of the single lumen tube so you uh, here you can see uh, this is a uh, we are doing the isolated lungs ventilation by a single lumen et tube uh, we are advancing to the un, uh, to the healthier side and uh, the unhealthy side is separated from the healthy side by this way uh, here again the, we are using single lumen et tube and uh, here uh, here the left side of uh, there is a uh, the source of uh, massive hemoptysis is on the left uh, uh, side and uh, so we are keeping the AT tube on the, in the trachea only above the carina and we are not going uh, distally and separating the right lungs by doing the right endobronchial intubation because uh, if we will do that uh, that uh, we may we may uh, we may obscure uh, obscure this area and uh, if we obscure this uh, this area then upper upper lobe will uh, not be uh, get ventilated so we uh, what we have done we have used a normal et tube which uh, which has been uh, uh, intubated and kept above the carina and for for get catheter is placed uh, and endobronchial block has been made so that the blood doesn't get aspirated and uh, it goes to the affected area here we have used a double lumen AT tube and you can see uh, the the one lumen is in trachea the other lumen is has gone to the and uh, to the right bronchus and uh, both uh, both lumen uh, lumen cuff has been inflated uh, so uh, and uh, this allow the ventilation of the right lungs while pre uh, while preventing occlusion occlusion of the right upper lobe by occluding the by not occluding the uh, this uh, uh, this uh, bronchial lumen so uh, here uh, single lumen AT tube is uh, used and forgrad catheter is placed uh, is uh, is negotiated by uh, via this tube through the bronchoscopy uh, bronchoscopy uh, th uh, through its suction uh, suction channel and uh, breathing source is localized uh, and uh, and then uh, the tamponade is made by inflating this forgrad uh, catheter so c of abc of course we have to 
uh, take a two wide bore cannula or we have to uh, place a central venous line fast iv fluid and uh, can uh, may be required uh, blood uh, blood from blood group blood grouping cross matching has to be done urgent blood transfusion if required has to be given till the blood specific uh, group specific blood group comes we may have to give o positive group uh, to the uh, male and uh, o negative group to the child bearing is female and a coagulation correction we have to do we will have to give anti anti fibrolytic uh, agents like tranexamic acid or amino caproic acid what are the causes of uh, hemoptysis the most common cause of hemoptysis is bronchiectasis tuberculosis fungal infection and cancer uh, the uh, it, we can divide the cause of hemoptysis according to the uh, affected vessel. If the, the cause is a small vessel, uh, then most likely it is because of immunology or vascul uh, vascul vasculitis, uh, vasculitis. Or it could be because of cardiovascular disease or coagulopathy. So immunological disease, uh, acute lungs, uh, allograft rejection, antiphospholipid antibody syndrome, and if it is because of vasculitis, it could be because of Bechet's disease, good pasture sy syndrome, uh, yeah, isolated pulmonary uh, capillaritis, microscopic uh, polyarthritis, mixed uh, cryoglobulinemia, Wegener's granulomatosis, uh, cardiovascular disease, mitr uh, mitral stenosis is the, one of the uh, uh, cause of cardiovascular disease causing hem hemoptysis. Uh, coagulation disorder could be because of iatrogenic or because of coagulopathy, uh, diffuse alveolar uh, disease, and uh, mm -mm, pulmonary hemosiderosis, tubercular uh, sclerosis, vena uh, occlusive disease. If, if it is because of large vessels, uh, uh, is the cause of uh, hemoptysis then it could be because of infective uh, disease other than cardiovascular uh, disease coagulation uh, coagulation disorder uh, it could be because of neoplas uh, neoplasia or vascular disease uh, in uh, infective disease abscess any abscess bronchitis bronchiectasis fungal infection parasitic infection pneumonia tuberculosis non tubercular mycobacterium could be the cause uh, cardiovascular uh, in cardiovascular disease arteriovenous mal malformation bronchial artery aneurysm bronchial uh, vascular uh, fistula congen uh, congenital heart uh, heart uh, sorry congestive heart failure pulmonary embolism or infarction pulmonary hypertension right sided endocarditis thora uh, thoracic aortic aneurysm rup uh, its rupture or dissection uh, septic pulmonary embolism, embolism, congenital disease like cystic fibrosis, pseudo, uh, pseudo sequestrations, pulmonary artery arthritis or stenosis, bronchial adenoma. Uh, if we take of neoplastic disease, bronchial adenoma, lungs uh, metastasis, primary lungs cancer. If we take of vascular uh, vascular disease, vasculitis, uh, Bachelor's disease. Lupus uh, pneumonitis, Taka Sugo arthritis, Wegener's uh, granulomatosis, chronic uh, obstructive airway disease, other causes like drug, foreign body, atrozenic, lexone, gun catheter, interstitial fibrosis, lungs contusion, pulmonary endo endometriosis, and trauma, dufelloid lesion of the bronchus, cryptogenic hemoptysis could be the cause. So source of breath. 90% uh, bronchial artery is the source of the breath because it is a high pressure artery and uh, other 5% is of pulmonary artery. The non-bronchial systemic artery could be uh, the uh, another 5% cause. So searching of bronchial artery origin is very important because it may not... Uh, uh, because in 30% uh, abnormal origin has been uh, seen and then if we, without knowing the source of... Uh, source and origin of uh, uh, or origin of bronchial artery if we embolize we may uh, uh, we may end up with the uh, endovascular treatment failure the worst thing is that in 3 to 42 percent uh, we couldn't find any cause uh, and the uh, and it, such cases are called cryptogenic mm -hmm. uh, hemoptysis 
uh, if the uh, if we are not able to find the cause and uh, of hemoptysis and there is no comorbidity and patient is smoker it is called smoking related uh, related rather than cryptogenic because uh, because tobacco induced bronchial wall inflammation is very common investigation basically depends upon the likely cause we have to take a proper history 50% in 50% uh, cases uh, history leads to a uh, proper uh, source of uh, source of uh, um, we uh, lateralization at least we can get the right lateralization and we can get the source of bleed so we need to uh, differentiate hemoptysis from pseudo hemoptysis that is whether it is from lower respiratory tract or from upper respiratory tract or from ent area or gastric area we need to differentiate these two uh, that we can get from uh, basically from the history physical exemption sputum uh, sputum uh, exemption and associated symptoms if there will be hemoptysis the patient the sputum will be frothy if we will put on uh, a you do the, alkaline, the ph test that it will be alkaline in nature and where the gastric hematemesis the uh, the blood will be acidic in nature because of the gastric acid uh, there will be uh, if there is hemoptysis there will be gastric symptoms if there is hemoptysis there will be respiratory symptoms if there is epistaxis uh, there generally there will be uh, some history of trauma here yeah, uh, or uh, there will be blood in the oropharynx and uh, rhinoscopy will uh, differentiate these two so uh, other general examination uh, general investigation we have to send like abg chest x ray k uh, uh, kft lft coagulation profile urine analysis for vasculitis uh, to see for any vasculitis d dimer for uh, d dimer for pulmonary embolism if we are suspecting so let let's talk about the diagnostic modality chest x ray we generally start with chest x ray because it is easily available it it can it will lateralize the uh, the source of bleed and uh, sensitivity is very low if we, we are not able to see anything on x ray and there is a hemoptysis which we have to uh, confirm it with other modality of uh, diagnostic multi reductor ct test is the, uh, is the main stay of diagnostic modality uh, by using the contrast material it allows uh, us a comprehensive evaluation of a lung parenchyma as well as airway as well as thoracic vessels advantage it is that in compare if you compare it with bronchoscopy bronchoscopy scope can go uh, as much distal uh, it can go to a uh, it has a limitation it can't go uh, throughout the distal airway to the maximum end but if we uh, if multi reactor ct scan is done it can uh, go from uh, trachea to end of the bronchus to the uh, to, to the alveoli and we can see all the Im uh, image of all the structure in the mediastinum limitation of uh, uh, multi reactor ct scan is that uh, it may not differentiate endobronchial lesion like it may not differentiate blood from the tumor or other other mimics so uh, if we do if we combine multi reactor ct scan with the bronchoscopy that gives a better accuracy of a diagnosis so here you can see these are the focal and diffuse pulmonary hemorrhage Uh, picture taken through the multi reactor ct scan uh, in ct scan in in this uh, a a ct scan name a uh, you can see there is a, uh, a alveolar focal alveolar intra alveolar ground glass opacity uh, opacity here you can see segmental segmental abnormal, abnormal lung parenchyma Uh, which uh, with which continuation of the abnormal bronchial bronchial uh, lumen maybe it is containing uh, blood in the uh, bronchial lumen here uh, here there is a mass with along with that the uh, peri lesion uh, hemorrhage is there 
depicted by the ground glass opacity here there is bilateral perihilar ground glass opacity because of the diffuse alveolar hemorrhage multi detector ct uh, scan instead of doing it is better to go for multi detector ct ngo uh, and it is the investigation of choice basically because it does the rtl mapping means how the uh, from where the artery is arising and what is its course where it is narrow where it is bleeding where it is hypertrophied and uh, so it uh, it is easy to embolize the vessels on this road map it uh, before so uh, before and along with uh, along with that along with the angiography mapping of the artery uh, it it has got got all the goodness of multi detector ct scan means it will tells uh, it will also tell us about the pulmonary parenchyma, uh, parenchyma as well as uh, uh, ye, as well as the airways so and we should do it for all the vessels not only for bronchial or pulmonary vessel we should do it for all the breast vessels bronchial pulmonary and non bronchial vessels as uh, as well as we should also always uh, look for the entire spinal artery origin it uh, if its origin is abnormal normally it is uh, at the level of uh, originate in the descending aorta at the level of T9 to T12 in 75% cases but if it is above that above uh, T, T7 uh, we should avoid bronchial artery embolization because there is a high chances of uh, yeah, paraparesis because of uh, because of accidental occlusion of um, the spinal artery features of bronchial uh, be, features of bleed, bleeding vessels extra vacation of dye visualization of tortuous vessels uh, which you can see as an increased caliber or aneurysmal dilatation of any vessels so these uh, things says that uh, there is this is the abnormal vessels and this needs to be uh, targeted during bronchial artery embolization Preambulation uh, multi detector CT NGO helps in minimizing the complication by decreasing the procedure time, uh, decreasing the potential iatrogenic uh, uh, risks of searching uh, vessels, bleeding vessels, minimize the contrast load, and minimize the fluoroscopy radiation, radiation for the patient and the operator both. So here, here you can see in this. Uh, multi detector ct ngo you can see these are the hypertrophied vessels which is seen as the enhanced nodules these are the hypertrophied vessels which is seen as the enhanced nodules and this 3d dimensional image has been ma made here this is a tortuous vessel which is the most likely cause of the uh, bleeding point and this uh, here you can see the course of the vessel uh, DSC is the not main uh, stay of treatment because uh, uh, or not main the main modality. First, we have to go for multi detector CT NGO and uh, uh, during bronchial RT embolization, we uh, we do DSA. Basically, it hel uh, it helps us. Uh, uh, to find the very thin calibrated uh, spinal artery, which we should not uh, miss, we should must uh, see where it is, so that we not we may not accidentally embolize it. Bronchoscopy is done, but it is always uh, it is always done after CT scan, and when uh, and when it should be done. Uh, it is a controversy uh, it's it is sometime in a very sick patient which can't be taken uh, out for ct scan in uh, sometime bronch uh, bronchoscopy is done uh, without doing ct scan uh, to te temporarily with uh, hold the with, uh, stop the bleeding by tampona effect or local uh, local th giving local therapy uh, bronchoscopy is uh, can be uh, done by rigid or flexible bronchoscopy. Rigid bronchoscopy uh, also helps in uh, controlling the airway, but it needs anesthesia. Whereas uh, flexible bronchoscopy, uh, 
uh, it is helpful it can go distally and it can help in uh, the uh, in treatment uh, and uh, generally patient tolerate it and less uh, requirement of anesthesia is there Lo uh, it helps in localizing the site in 65% of massive hem hemoptysis and 45% in the mild hemoptysis uh, but massive hemoptysis sometimes it may hinder the view the hemoptysis the blood can hinder the view of the bronchoscope and we may not able to see some anything so at the same time uh, at the same time bronchoscopy can't go uh, distally and uh, uh, and in the multi CT scan, we can see as a whole uh, lungs and the airway. We can see till uh, one end to another end. Uh, because of the sc scoop may cause further bleeding uh, because of bronchial irritation. Uh, or And it, uh, it is less helpful in telling the underlying cause of bleed. Uh, but we can get a sample from there by uh, bronchial uh, bronchial alveolar levas we can take the sample we can take uh, a cytology we can send for uh, cultures galactomen and gene experts uh, gam stain so these are the benefit of doing bronchoscopy therapy which can be done through bronchoscopy is just uh, directly we can uh, infiltrate cell uh, cold saline and uh, we can put it uh, adrenaline 1 to 20,000 uh, dilution a thrombin fibrin can be uh, can be inserted a temporary therapy with oxidizing regenerated cellulose mess can be done endo uh, bronchial balloon tampona can be done forget uh, catheter uh, is uh, is uh, introduced through the bronchoscopy uh, it's suction port through its suction port and uh, it is proceed distally to the segmental bronchus where we can where uh, where there is a bleed we can make a tampona and uh, uh, decrease stop the bleeding so endo and endovascular uh, embolization is the mainstay of treatment of a, uh, a massive hemoptysis and uh, it is the minimum invasive most effective uh, in massive and recurrent hemoptysis it could be uh, taken as a definitive therapy or it, it can be used in congestion with, with the uh, with the surgery uh, initially we can stabilize the patient with a, a bronchial artery embolization and once the pressure is decreased in uh, in the hypertrophied art, uh, artery then we can go for uh, surgical dissection the complication of bronchial artery embolization, the most devastating complication is spinal cord infarction leading to pyoparesis. Uh, it may cause systemic embolization, hemoptysis, chest pain, pyrexia, uh, vessels perforation. Uh, these are the, the complication. Intermil, intimal tear could be could happen. So here you can see this is the bron uh, bleeding art, bronchial artery, left bronchial artery. And here it has been embolized, so that now there is no extravocation of dye. Surgical resection uh, used to be early uh, main, uh, mainstay of treatment, but nowadays it is not done uh, until there is a localized ble bleeding and it is uh, or the bleeding is refractory to uh, other therapy like endobronchial therapy. Uh, surgical resection uh, ranges. Mortality range of surgical resection is from uh, one percent to fifty percent, and indication is basically when it is localized and recurrent bleeding, even with not enabled with the endobronchial or other therapy. Chest trauma and iatrogenic pulmonary artery rupture because of Sonnen catheter is the one of the most common indication for surgery. Other uh, other indication are leaking aorta and risen. Uh, selected case of arteriovenous malformation can uh, be managed with surgical resection. Hydratocysts uh, may require surgical resection. Uh, surgery, uh, surgical surgery during acute hemorrhage 
uh, has a high risk complication and the mortality rate range from 7 to 18 percent which may increase up to 40 percent in, in emergency if taken for emergency surgery surgical resection pharmacological th therapy depends upon the uh, underlying cause if infection is the cause we have to treat with antibiotics if, and if and uh, fungus yeah it, it is because of a fungal infection we have to give antifungal if it is because of vasculitis or or immuno immunological cause we may have to treat with steroids if uh, if uh, anti uh, if a coagulation profile is the uh, abnormal coagulation profile is, is the cause we have to give we have to uh, correct the coagulation abnormality summary of the hemoptysis of uh, hemoptysis diagnosis and treatment basically any uh, massive hemoptysis we have to start with chest assay and we have to go for multi multiple detector ct angio uh, in ct angio if we get the we find the uh, source if it is the uh, find the source we go for dsa plus endovascular embolization if it is because of chest trauma or bronchial uh, or uh, iatrogenic pulmonary artery rupture we may have to go for surgery if we couldn't find anything in the uh, multi director ct angio uh, we go for bronchoscopy and uh, see whether we can find any source of bleeding or not if we could find the source of bleeding we may go for again for dsa and uh, arterial and arterial endovascular embolization and if we don't find any uh, anything on bronchoscopy any source on bronchoscopy also it is called cryptogenic hemoptysis and we have to manage conservatively there are these are the references from where i have uh, made this slide thank you